Born in Bulgaria in 1955 near the capital city of Sofia, Val Eliev had a natural ability for creativity, invention, and problem solving. His father a jet pilot trainer, his mother a nurse, Val grew up in a seemingly normal childhood. But the way of life for most Bulgarians the past two decades had been difficult. Since post-World War II, Bulgaria was under communist rule and was choked by the oppressive hands of the Soviet Union. While the Eliyevs and their fellow countrymen persevered under communist rule, a watershed moment in Val's young life happened late in 1963. When I was in grade school, I remember my father and his friends used to meet often and discuss politics in general, communism and what the rules and regulations are. Uh, and one of the meetings, I remember them being more concerned than I've ever seen them, all of them. And uh, that's when they said, Kennedy is shot. So I was wondering, what, who's Kennedy? And they were saying, well, Khrushchev is going to destroy the world now. So that, that's what kind of started the whole, the whole process of thinking that there is something more than uh, what the communists are telling us, that it's the best you know, possible world. And that's when I started researching and tried to get primarily on shortwave radio information about the West. While attending university, communist authorities took notice of Val and his classmates who were writing papers and voicing their opinions on communism. It became a dangerous enough situation that Val had no other choice but to escape to the West. After riding a train out of Bulgaria, Val's borrowed passport would get him as far as Hungary. It was this part of the escape which would prove to be the most dangerous. In, uh, I went through Romania, then Yugoslavia, then Hungary, uh, based on the permissions on my friend's passport that I borrowed. And in Hungary, I had to change the stamp that permits me to go from Hungary to Yugoslavia. And um, so I spent a week in Budapest working on a stamp, and I thought I had it perfect. Um, so on the train, typically, they stopped the train at the border, and they would have a officer of Hungarian army with two Russian soldiers uh, check everybody's documents and luggage and everything. Uh, so the officer, the Hungarian officer that showed up was a major, and he was a little ahead of the Russian soldiers that were carrying Kalashnikovs. And he looked at my passport, and you can tell on his face that, kid, this is this is just not. Uh, so the Russians came real quick, and uh, he told them soft paratke in, in Russian, that everything is fine. Uh, it's, it's worth noting that the Russians would, if they kill or arrest somebody, they would get a month's vacation and a cow as a bonus to their efforts. So they were kind of eager to catch somebody. But that major helped me, and. Um, I've been counting my blessings since. And actually that's what primarily started Shasta. I basically felt since then that whatever I do going forward would have to be relevant to helping humanity and saving lives, just like that officer saved my life, definitely, at the time. So that's always been on my mind to um, going forward and everything I did. Well, Shot Stop was developed out of necessity that we discovered when we did a project for FBI. Uh, when they requested we design and engineer a foldable tactical shield for their officers. Uh, the weight was a huge problem. Uh, they were hoping to get three and a half pound shield, but with the technology available at the time, it was uh, more like eight, nine pounds. So that kind of 
got our attention on looking closer into the advanced armor industry uh, to see why isn't there a lighter, better material out there. And then by that time, we had a contract with Wind Development of all places uh, as a uh, specialty engineering firm uh, where we were able to uh, submit ballistic board for their safe rooms in uh, Macau Resort. And that essentially brought in about a million dollars, which funded the start of Shutstock. Well, first about Shot Stop, we are uh, formed the company a little bit different than most companies. Uh, we are looking for small investors to join us with expertise to help the business grow, uh, rather than going the traditional venture capital. Uh, so now we have a large number of experts that are truly committed to his helping us save lives. Going forward, uh, we will continue advancing our technology and making products that are lighter weight and more competitive on the marketplace uh, and continue uh, saving lives through uh, those technologies and manufacturing capabilities on um, military, law enforcement, as well as infrastructure uh, markets. Eurythium was developed for the need of having a raw material uh, that is not chemically falling apart as most of the competitors' materials did. Um, so we developed Eurythium formulas, three of them, uh, that are centered around advanced polymer technologies uh, and utilizing molecular structure manipulations to have the long chains needed for uretin to be strong and uh, resistant to impact. Uh, so that, that's how that was started and it was developed over four or five years now. Uh, and we're implementing now the raw material as well as manufacturing technologies uh, that are patented, patent pending, as well as proprietary to keep advancing our armor and protection.